Hey, what's up everyone? So everyone knows YouTube channel is super, super fun, but sometimes you have to buy equipment, you have to upgrade, and disk space is something that you run out of a lot. I've already run out of it. So I'm upgrading my home studio with the Western Digital My Duo 16 terabyte, and want to unbox it and set it all up. So let's check it out. So, okay, so... I got here the My Duo, the My Cloud Home Duo, and I got 16 terabytes. Just so everyone knows, kind of the setup I have in my home studio, which you're kind of seeing it right now. I actually have a couple different um, stations to do YouTube videos, and each one of the computers has their own like one and a half terabyte kind of hard drive, and then there's like a solid state drive for like the games and like running off. So the super super fast drive, a solid state, it's much smaller, it's like 500 gigs and then um, have storage on a much larger traditional hard drive, but even that is starting to go away, especially when you try to do everything at 1080p, 60 frames a second, um, recording from different cameras and keeping all that raw footage out there. Um, Premiere Pro does a really good job of kind of cataloging um, all the materials and clips and sound bites and all that stuff you use for your um, material, but you still have to house it somewhere. It only kind of keeps a label of it in the cloud. You still have to physically have it somewhere located where it can access it. If you ever want to readjust your um, videos or do montages or anything like that. So I ended up getting this. Now, doing my research with um, external hard drives, and we'll call this external hard drives, not necessarily portable external hard drives. These are not, I did not go out and uh, try to get something that could take with me on the road or anything like that. I have little flash drives. I think those are fine in the devices that I use. Um, this is more so home, and I wanted to make sure I got something that was cloud-based because I've noticed that there are things out there that Western Digital, Seagate, other companies make, um, Samsung, uh, that are external hard drives that go on your desktop, but they're meant for that one computer that's hooked onto it. You can still transfer files to other computers, but if you want like a seamless experience across several different computers in your home network using um, an external type of drive that can access like crazy, kind of like, um, you know, like a OneDrive, then you need to get something that has a cloud kind of uh, component to it. And in this case, I got the MyCloud Home Duo, which the difference between the MyCloud Home is that the MyCloud Home Duo, as the name kind of implies, it's got two different uh, hard drives in it. And so you could do um, kind of a backup of a backup. So eight terabytes backing up all your stuff and then eight terabytes backing up the backup if you want to do that. I didn't see a big reason to um, kind of invest in doing a backup of the backup because this is going to be physically located in my home. If the home were to burn down or something like that, I'm going to lose both of those drives. Um, so you can actually set it up to where, at least they say you can set it up to where you can have both eight terabyte drives just be 16 terabytes in total, which is what I'm gonna have this set up as as well. Also notice that whenever I was looking at the MyCloud Home system, that if I were to get two eight terabyte drives, um, it was a bit more expensive than just getting the 16 terabyte um, kind of duo drive and just making it, you know, instead of two eights, one full 16. Um, I thought about getting two eights just because I have two computers and I thought maybe they, you know, it'd be easier to kind of divide like 50-50 down the middle. Each computer gets eight terabytes, but in reality, I don't need to do that. And it was cheaper to get it like this. And I got it a little bit on sale on Western Digital's um, website. Maybe that's why it's a little bit cheaper, but if I can recall properly, I've been researching this for a few months now and it's always been, there's always some kind of little discount on the Home Duos ones. So I, that's what I would recommend. Um, and the read and write times on this, when I compared it with the Samsung offerings and, and others, um, it was either right there at the top, very near, or was pretty, you know, commendable compared to some of the, like, the number one uh, drives are out there. And when you looked at the price, the performance and everything, this was a really, really, really good value, really good option. So let's go ahead and start unboxing this thing, see what it comes with. So it's a rather, rather big box. Um, pulling this thing open, y'all. And it looks like first thing in here, you get a three month exclusive pass to Plex, which Plex is, from what I understand, doing my research, it's a way for you to stream, um, if you had like movies and stuff like that on here, 
you could stream it like just live stream is not a good way to put it, but stream it um, like streaming service to a bunch of devices, a couple of different phones, iPads, computers. Um, so it sets up a streaming service and you have to pay for that. But I've heard that it also has a default software that works pretty good for that as well. But let's see. So I have this three month pass for that. Got a little bit of a like a setup and it's basically it says plug it into your router and plug it into the wall. Wait for the lights to go solid on the front and then go to the mycloud.com forward slash hello on your phone. And it's saying that's that's the setup in a nutshell. So at least the initial setup. So let's pull this out here. Looks like we got a box on the side with some yep, yeah, we got so we kind of got the way this is set up. It's kind of packaged in there. The device with uh, kind of the foam stuff and then we'll talk all the cordage over here in this little side box. We're gonna pull the side box out to see what's in here. Get us a good view of the camera. So yep. Let's put that to the side. So we got it's like Cat5 cord, cool, cool. We got the power cord itself. What is this? Oh, we got a power supply. Okay, pretty, pretty standard. And we have our technical support and limited warranty guide. And yeah, this is just all minutia in several different languages about your warranty. So not a lot of cool value adding stuff in there. Let's go ahead and pull this out of the package proper. Oh, it's actually much smaller. Let's go ahead and put the box to the side. Actually much smaller than what it looks like when you look at it in the box. You take off the foam ends here. Wow, it's actually quite small, comparatively speaking. So this is like, this is the big mamma jamma. If you go to Western Digital's website, this is exactly how it sits on their website and it seems like it's going to be like a mini tower size when you look at it on the website but man like this is actually pretty small it's actually pretty small pretty cute i like it so that's kind of all we got here and i do have my router inside my studio i have gig speed internet all that stuff I have the latest protocols um i have like the cat 7 or cat 8 whatever i've got all the wires to make me hit the most highest kind of uh, data transferring speeds. So I'm going to hook this up right here to my router. I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to power and I'm probably going to put it, I, you know, in case you can't tell, I have my, my desk back here. Um, I have kind of a, another desk, a table kind of forming a T and then I have another one that's kind of same configuration as the one here straight across. So I have a T set up, two stations, four um, monitors and boom mics and lights and all this other stuff. And so right in the middle here, I kind of have a little cabinet that has um, batteries and little chargers and cords and stuff like that for headsets, um, controllers. And um, I do have a Beefcake Lynch kind of LED sign on there for my gaming channel. So um, I'll actually probably stick this up here just so I can always kind of see it and make sure it's doing okay, at least initially set up. And um, all right, let's go. Okay, so here's what we got. So. I have the MyCloud Home Duo hooked up to my router, which I have just a standard gig speed router, I guess the, the highest end one you can get from Xfinity. Um, so I have it plugged in directly to that here in my studio, my home studio, um, and have power all hooked up. Everything's great. Went to the MyCloud.com, um, like hello, that website was on this thing right here. I'm looking at my little camera so I can see it. Um, went to the website and set up on a device, went to it on a desktop because I want to be able to show everything here. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm on there now and here's what it looks like. So I was able to go in, had to create um, a user account with my email address, password, and now I'm right past the, the step where I created that and it's just saying, hey, here's what we found on your network, my cloud home deal. Let's go ahead and connect to this bad boy. Ask me if I want to... These analytics opt-ins. Huh? I'm gonna hit hit do not share. I just I don't know. They get a little weird with it. Talks about um, devices ready to go. That was pretty easy. Um, get the My Cloud Home app below to start using your new device. So it looks like you actually have to use an app. Which yeah, it looks like there's a desktop app. So let's go ahead and do that. 
And actually, let's get this, uh, let's go ahead and I'll accept those just to get that off the stupid screen. So let's go ahead and do that. And it says continue to my cloud home for web. So we'll do both. So we're going to install this app real quick. Install this thing. Say do not share. Gosh, they really want you to share some stuff on here. Okay. So we did that. Import data. You can see here on the right, you can set a password, change device configuration, and more with your USB device. Let's see. Tells you My Cloud Home. Have a My Cloud Home. Sign in here. So this is like an app just for a bunch of their products. Your notifications there. Okay. So My Cloud Home. Yeah, let's sign in. All right. What we got now? It said welcome. Cool. Oh, let's see. Oh crap, my bad. Let's see. Let's get in here. Oh crap. There we go. So drag and drop files to your My Cloud Home or right click a folder to sync. All right. Share links. Right click on any file in your My Cloud Home to create a share link and make available offline. Right click on any file in your My Cloud Home to mark it as available offline. Okay, got it. So it looks like it's saying I have the seven terabytes. And I bet you that's because I need to be able to have the setup to where I actually use all of my storage. This is kind of cool. So immediately when you click in, it's actually let's go to the let's go to let's go to web. Oh, look at this. And so when you go to web, it is so much uh, more intuitive than the little bowling alley kind of app. So we got nothing on the drive, obviously. So this is my cloud home. Got my stuff. Let's see my settings here. So as I told you, you can actually set this up to where, yeah, so it's saying eight terabyte space available. So right now it's set up, from what I understand, it's set up to do the... Um, yeah, the RAID 1 configuration, um, which is backed up across two drives, your effective storage space is limited to 8 terabytes. But even if one drive fails, your data will remain safe and sound and can be recovered. So that's also for drive failures and all that stuff. I'm going to keep a bunch of YouTube videos and game downloads and all the stuff on here. So I'm not too, it's not like nuclear secrets are going to get lost if my drives fail. But um, using JBOD... <laughs> will give your give you access to all 16 terabytes of effective storage space but if either drive fails your data will be permanently lost which is weird they're kind of putting that stuff out there they're like if you do this without a backup it could fail but in reality they also sell just the eight terabyte all the way down to like one or two terabytes just the my cloud home without the duo on it without dual drives and it seems to be fine so we're just going to do that um it's going to have to erase all data. So good thing to note, if you get this thing and you start using it as a duo and you're on RAID 1 um, and you want to switch it over, it's going to erase all of your data. Um, you must enter a code and everything. Like they are serious that this is like a thing. They do not want you doing this. So you'll be logged out. Device will restart, followed by a series of breathing lights. Okay, let's let's do this thing. So another thing to note, as I was plugging up the My Cloud Home Duo, um, it is it's like I guess it's the traditional hard drives in there, and I know I have these stats somewhere, but they they talk about the two different drives, just like the red ones or something that go in there, um, and it's for the speed. It's the different types of levels of of drives that Western Digital makes. I don't know if you could hear that. Right there. So I don't know if you heard that because um, the way that my mic is pointing, it's set up to take sound in this way and the drive is like that way. Um, but it is loud when the fan kicks on, um, even though it is much smaller than the two desktop computers I have running in here with liquid cooled fans, like eight fans like per tower. This little thing is much louder than both those towers when the fan spins up. Right now the fan is kind of just normal running I guess and you hear it's like a whoo 
but when it spins up it is loud like a little handheld vacuum cleaner which that's cool if it's going to run like that whenever you're uploading things or downloading things but considering that it came with like three months of this plex stuff um to stream from it like man it would really suck if that's how loud that thing got because i actually it, it's going to make me want to like move it to like the closet in here or something which is still well ventilated and all that but just set to yeah to at least muffle that sound oh my god this thing is loud yeah shut up maybe it was just testing itself i think it was because it was rebooting so let me get back in here real quick okay so totally back now got everything booted up it was actually kind of weird i forgot it actually told me it was 20 minutes so the little flashy light on the front of the um the drive um, it's finally solid now um the website the my cloud home it, it did pick it right up it saw it everything so here we are we're back into it um so let me see what it actually so my settings here current storage what does it say yep 14.15 of 16 wait a second i'm sure some of that's like the os or whatever it says i have so i can add users here which i'm gonna do i have a couple people that actually come by and use this other workstation in my studio um yes i i do try to help out other streamers and and stuff um that play xbox and need to edit stuff so i have like that other computer set up for streaming for editing um so i'll let them put their stuff on here as well and then access it from the the cloud so when they're at their house and they want to download some things or upload them they can actually download their videos from this device so it looks like there's some erase all data detached from this device you can shut it down from here let's see add another storage what Wow, so you could actually, it looks like, yeah, so you could actually add some more. So that's what I was kind of worried about too, that if I were to buy the 16 terabyte My, um, my Cloud Home Duo, that it would be not enough, because um, 16 terabytes is the biggest you can get. And yeah, it looks like you can actually put a couple of them together. So that's really, really cool. So let's add a settings. Let's see, do more. Okay, yeah, let's just agree. So... Yeah, so you can actually do more with it. So Plex, yeah, Plex Media Server organizes all of your photos, videos, music, all that stuff. Oh, you can set it up to uh, create the IFTTT. I use that with like Amazon Alexa and stuff to create different kind of logic things when I give a command to a smart device. It's going to trigger all these other things with devices that may not be Alexa enabled or whatever is what I use that for. I mean, there's probably a bunch of other stuff. You use with that my cloud Alexa skills. Wow, that's so cool. Social and cloud import Sonos, which I do have Sonos downstairs. Connect your my cloud home to your Sonos. So if I had music, I guess on this my cloud, I could connect it to my Sonos, and, it, and the my cloud would be a streaming source, just like Apple Music is for me on there. Um, and you can import or copy data from your older model my cloud. Wow. So if you want to upgrade devices too, totally. If you had the single one, which is shown up here in this picture. Um, that's the single looking thing. It's just literally kind of half the, the width. You can, wow, just transfer it all over. You have DVR store, Apple TV. This is actually really, really cool stuff. So channel DVR uses your HD home run tuner to record your favorite HD shows. Wow. You can do that. Plex. Yep. You can enjoy all of your personal media on all of your devices. You usually share them with your friends, family. Huh. Okay. So yeah, you do have a free Plex media server software. Okay, and that's probably what's taking up some of the storage. And then if you get a premium Plex pass with Plex DVR record over the air TV right to your MyCloud home device to view. So that must be what this is for right here. And actually this does say, yeah, this is a three month Plex pass to use with your Western Digital Drive. So yeah, premium Plex pass. Okay, so that's what this is. So they give you three months of that. Let's see what the MyCloud um, My Alexa skills. Okay, so it's basically using it as a streaming type of thing. Um, crowd storage. Yeah, it's all really cool stuff. So do more, 
um, there is a couple of USB um, drives on the back of the drive as well on the MyCloud Home Duo. Um, from what I understand, the only way to make this thing work is you have to have it plugged in with a Cat5 or better. I'm using a Cat5e uh, cord into your router. Um, the USB ports on the back, and there's two of them, are only there to import files into the drive itself. From what I understand, um, they're not there to connect it to any PC or anything like that. Um, so just know and be aware of that. The only way to connect to this thing is through your Wi-Fi network, connecting this directly to your router. Um, you have a shared folder, you got an album, albums folder. Let's see the desktop app. Let's see what that looks like. How much more different? Yep. Oh, it actually says 100% available, but I wonder if I sign out of this. Oh yeah, so you got some drives, some backup. You have some security, some drive utilities. So it looks like you have a lot of good resources to use with this. And actually it looks pretty easy to do. Files and folders. Let me see if it add. Okay, so, so what I did is I said, let me see if I can add some files here. So I just went to my desktop, picked the first thing, which um, Boys and Gr Girls Club of Metro Denver, I always purchase tickets for a raffle um, every year from, from them, just a uh, charitable giving, plus, you know, it'd be cool to win a prize. So I have that in there, really cool. If I select that, it pulls it right up. Um, let me see what it does for my Windows Explorer type of stuff. So I went into my PC and sure enough, now you, I have network drives on here. So if I added other users, added, obviously this other PC that would be on my network would be able to see this drive. And so you'd have me on there as a user and probably somebody else. And I notice that there's a one on here and then there's a Z. So I've noticed that maybe that might be the, the dual type of thing. I don't know, but um, let me see the properties. This says it's 16. Yeah, so this is all the terabytes. So I guess that's the other drive, but it's basically being used as one drive. So I guess it still has the drive letter, which is kind of weird, but um, yeah, so it's right there. Um, so easy to access your files um, from Windows Explorer, um, just like you would anything else, um, just like OneDrive actually. So um, it looks like I would just have to get on the app on my phone and I could access this file download it to my device if I wanted to. If it was a video, I could watch it in streaming with this basic kind of Plex services. I can add the, the premium Plex stuff, see what that's all about if I want to do that. Um, but overall, this thing seems pretty legit. Um, the rating for this right now, uh, in my mind, is uh, it's pretty high. So overall, I kind of like it. Um, but I do want to point out that I was wrong earlier when I was saying that I think the 16 terabytes the largest you can get is actually 20 terabytes. But as you can see, the price really jumps up when you select 20 terabytes of $700. It's only 500 on sale. It's still on sale. So this is what I saw. This is what I paid um, for mine. It's 500 If you go to like the regular one with 8 terabytes, um, it actually doesn't equal 500 It's like 269 or something like that. Even this 8 terabyte, if you get two of these, it's, you know... 329 or 330 times two versus just doing it like this. So if you have any kind of tips or anything you can give me on using this thing, if you stepped on landmines with it and said, hey, I don't want you to have these kind of issues I have, please put it in the comments. Always love to get advice um, from people that have used stuff before I've used it. Um, and again, if you like what you see here, if you like the other videos I've made, please like, subscribe, give me some comments, show me some love. Also check out my gaming channel, Beefcake Lynch Gaming. Do a lot of streaming and stuff on there as of late, but we'll be making other content as well. Um, until next time, see you next video.